Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our Kristen Eagle 2 and we're looking at the radio. As it turns out, it's got pretty cool radio. So we're going to look at who we're going to be talking to. We're going to be talking to Abu Dhabi International. Clicking on that there, we can find that he has four frequencies of interest. The one that we can tune into is the VHF on AM modulation. So that's 119.20. That's the one we can contact. Now let's click on our plane. We'll pick this uh, chap down here. Here, I'm going to click on the presets here. We can have 19 different presets, although I thought we could only have nine, Stoll. Can you confirm? I can only see nine in the cockpit. Yeah, we can have a nine. Yeah, it's, it's very normal for in the mission editor to, for this to be a little bit inaccurate. It happens with a lot of the planes I've found. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, set channel three as the one that we're interested in. We're going to set that to 119.2, I think that was. Now, um, the, the channel can handle the lower range of the VHF. So that is 118 as a minimum, megahertz, AM mod modulation, and a maximum of 136. Now, in the mission editor, it allows us to set up to well, let's have a look. 390, that's the top of UHF. Um, I'm, we're pretty sure the Kristen Eagle radio does not handle UHF. We're pretty sure it only tops up to 136 megahertz, even though we can set up to 390 in the mission editor. Like I said before, the mission editor is quite normal for it to be inaccurate. We found that in several planes. For instance, the it's probably, probably down to the fact that they presumably uh, reused some assets. There's also key binds for firing weapons, attracting gear and the like that shouldn't be in the Kristen well, so Eagle flaps. I noticed when doing the BF-109 video, video, in reality, it can only serve up to 42.4 megahertz, and it goes up to 136 or something in the mission editor. So it's just a little thing. Anyway, so 119.2. Now let's go and jump in, save it and jump in the cockpit. Okay, we're in the cockpit now. So we're going to look at the radio. It's down here. Now it looks pretty simple, not many controls, but it's actually pretty good radio. So first thing that we're going to do is hover over the main control switch here. It's currently off, as you can see. We're going to use a mouse scroll to scroll it right, and the further right we go, the further up the volume. Out of interest, we can right-click on this to, to test uh, the radio, and you can hear that we've got squelch there. Now, we can change the squelch or the anti-squelch by um, turning left and right, scrolling left and right when it's pulled out. I'm going to unpull it to now, and I pull it out with the right-click, by the way. The next thing to say is that we get two frequencies that we can look at. We've got the main active frequency. This is the one we use when we push the button to talk to someone. And this is the standby frequency. So the first thing to show is that we can change the standby frequency by using these two knobs here. An outer knob, an inner knob, and we can also pull out the inner knob like that, like so. We can actually change them by using the mouse scroll. So I'm going to mouse scroll that to, well, whatever some random frequency and change that inner knob like thus and now I can ch I can make that become the active frequency by clicking on the transfer button there so that that's now the active and that's now the standby so that's how I would do that okay then the next thing is to show that we can cycle through the preset frequencies now we don't think this is working actually in the mission editor I know I showed it but I click channel once and we can see we get the preset channel here I can then cycle through it by either clicking channel again or scrolling the frequency selector and you can see we're changing through the presets here but if we go to number three we can see that it's not the value that we set in the mission editor so we're not sure why that's not working at the moment we just think mission editor is probably not working at the moment anything you want to add to that star i have very little experience with the mission editor so i don't know but uh if you don't just don't do anything for a couple of seconds you'll automatically go out of channel mode again so as soon as the uh, channel number on the right goes away, make sure not to keep twisting the knob, otherwise you'll change the frequency of your backup frequency. Roger, so the next thing we're going to show is that we can set the presets within here, within the set. Can you talk us through that, please, Dal? So to change uh, the channel pieces, you need to hold down the channel button for about two seconds. Hey, Furman, I've got a flashing preset number. Exactly. Now you can, uh, by using the frequency knobs, select uh, the frequency you want to change. Yep, number three. And as soon as soon as you have that, you can then uh, press the transfer button uh, to switch over to the actual frequency. So as soon as that starts blinking, you can then change the frequency of the preset. Roger. You can also, if you go all the way to 118 and then even lower than that, or 136 and then even higher than that, you can go to all dashes, which is basically no preset. Roger, okay. Well, I've changed preset 3 here to 119.20. That's my ATC. How do I accept that? Uh, if you want to exit again, just press channel. Roger. Now I'm going to press the transfer button to make 119.20 my active frequency. And at this point, I'm going to do a call to the tower. Actually use it. I just want to show how to do it. We're going to use the communications menu here. And we have to have, in the mission editor, we have to have set easy communications off for this to work properly. So we're going to press that button now. 
We're going to request a taxi to runway. Dodge Fingers crossed. Request taxi to runway. Took his, took his time, but uh, we got there. Next, I'm going to show that if we change the frequency to something that's not tuned in, this 118 we're using now, we cannot talk to the tower. So I'm going to abort the takeoff now, and we should not Dodge get response. One, three. Abort takeoff. Okay, happy with that. Right, Charles, what do you want to show next? Uh, well, there's also direct tune mode. If you want to change the frequency you're currently using instead of just a backup frequency, you yep. can just hold down the transfer button for about two seconds, and then you should see the standby frequency just vanish. Yep, and so now I can change these here and just change the active frequency, which is probably just the easiest way for, for general usage. Okay, that's fine. And then if you just press transfer again, you should exit the mode. Roger. Also, there's the so-called default mode, uh, which is probably only going to be used uh, in real life. Uh, in, in DCS it's not going to have much of a function. Uh, if the display happens to die on you, uh, so for that you'll have to turn the radio off first. Right. And then hmm? yep. and then hold down the transfer button while you scroll it back on. Uh, then you see you're in direct tune mode, mm -hmm. uh, but with a frequency preset to 120. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that allows you to then tune the frequency because you know exactly where you're at and all you have mm -hmm. to do is um, turn the frequency knobs even without without seeing anything. Roger. Uh, to get out of it again, you will have to turn off the radio again from all I've seen so far and turn it back on. Okay, fine. That makes sense. Turning off, turning back on. Right. Anything else you want to show, Star? Yeah, there are uh, several display adjustments which don't actually have anything to do with the frequencies. So if you uh, press and hold the channel button until that starts to flash again. Done. And then you need to keep holding that. Sorry, I didn't tell you in advance. And then press the transfer button so you can use your right click then for that. Have I got DA space one space one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you have three different display just uh, modes. Uh, if you press channel, you can cycle through them. I've got and DA two, DA three. Exactly. And the frequency selector you can then use to adjust the values. So. They basically all have to do with your display brightness. Um, so D1 is the dimming or brightening response time. So this thing actually has photovoltaic cells which will detect the outside light level, the ambient light level, mm -hmm. and automatically adjust display brightness according to that. Yep. Uh, DA1 mode uh, is the response time it takes. Uh, so in 1, it's immediate. If you set it all the way to 8, which is the maximum value, it's about 8 seconds before it reacts. Wow. Uh, 2 to 7 would be intermediate modes. Okay. If you press channel, you go to DA2. Yep. Um, that's pretty much just going to be used when it's dark outside. Um, so it's like your, um, your general brightness. Uh, normal value would be 20, 0 would be the dimmest, and 64 is the brightest. Watch out. And if you press channel again and go to DA3, that's basically the sensitivity of the photovoltaic cells. So it's the amount of light needed uh, to go to full dim or full brightness. Uh, normal values range between 0 and 30, uh, with 0 being the dimmest and the highest value you can go to is 255. Realistically speaking, apparently that would mostly be used uh, to adjust the display brightness as the display itself ages and you know, just won't uh, work as nicely anymore. Okay. So those are the yeah, display so settings. Yep, yeah, you can just press transfer to get out of that again, and that's it. That's the radio done. Right, lovely. I hope that helps everyone, and see you later.